Well, this video is about comprehending and diagnosing low spark voltage. It's one of the most confusing things to diagnose in a motor that's not running correctly or not running at all, because by all appearances, it usually looks like everything's good when you're testing it. Spark in all gas engines comes primarily just from an ignition coil or something like that. There's a primary winding of heavier wire with less turns, metal core, and secondary winding for higher output for the high voltage side with many more turns. Whether it be magneto powered or 12 volt powered or however it's powered, it's supposed to send anywhere from 20 to 35,000 volts on average to the spark plug, which seems like way more than it needs to jump that tiny gap since that many volts can jump about an inch. But since air is an insulator, the more you compress it, the more air gets between the gap of your spark plug when it's in the conditions inside your cylinder and that makes more of an insulator so it may seem like a small space to jump but the air I mean but the spark actually has a hard time to jump that little gap when there could be ten times more air pressure in there thus ten times more voltage coming out than appears to be necessary at least theoretically symptoms of low spark voltage your engine won't start but it has great spark, it's getting gas, there's nothing wrong with the camshaft and everything was fine just a while ago before the problem occurred. It just won't start. Second symptom is, it starts but as soon as you rev it or give it more throttle, it just dies. Third symptom, it starts, you can rev it somewhat. It might die a bit on the higher RPMs but if it's like on a motorized vehicle like a motorcycle or a quad or something, as soon as you start to drive it and give it throttle, when it's under load, then it cuts out and dies. So it sounds very confusing, yet it'll always appear to have spark when you check it. Well, of course, the reason why it's dying is if you have low spark voltage and you're opening the throttle, then, of course, more air and fuel is getting in there. The fuel doesn't matter, but the fact there's more air getting in there is causing more of an insulator between that gap, so the spark just isn't strong enough to actually jump the gap. The easiest way to diagnose low spark voltage in an engine that's actually running is to make the spark gap half the size that it's supposed to be and then test the engine again under all the same conditions starting, idling, revving, and driving under load. If all of a sudden all those ranges improve in performance and you can go farther or faster than you could before well then definitely you have low spark voltage. Sometimes there's just so much crud on the insulator around that tip that it gives you the appearance of low spark voltage. It's just that the electricity would rather run down all that crud because it's conductive than jump the gap. So sometimes just changing your spark plug will fix all the problems I just mentioned. The other reasons for low spark voltage are overdrawing on your primary winding on your coil. That means for some reason it just went bad and some of the it got too hot and some of the winds have melted itself together through the enamel and it's just not working properly. It doesn't have the right resistance and the right many of turns that are energized because of the short between coils. You can have the same short between coils on the output side and that usually happened because of poor insulation and high voltage finding a way between loops or high voltage finding a way to get to the center soft iron core and ground out there. Another thing that sometimes causes hard starting on a car or a vehicle with a electric starter motor is low voltage caused by an overdrawing starter motor. motor. Usually the field coil winding got cranked, your, your starter motor got cranked too many times and overheated and your fuel coil winding is partly shorted. When it's partly shorted it's drawing so many amps from the battery that your voltage going to the ignition coil that feeds your spark plug is actually maybe only about six or seven volts while the motor's cranking because it's drawing too much amps and that's causing low spark voltage and it makes your vehicle difficult to start. This is especially true on street bikes and stuff where They'll start great with a kickstart, but if you try to start them with electric start and electric start isn't cranking at full speed, maybe just because your battery's a bit low, it won't start at all. On old, like lawnmower engines with points of condenser, it's very common to have a lawnmower that appears everything's okay with, looks like normal spark on the spark plug, but your condenser is very weak. It's called because of leakage. The condenser is just a capacitor with two aluminum plates wound up close together like foil. And when there's leakage, electrons are going between the 
foil in the insulator and bleeding the capacitor and that's still allowing it to have a spark but not strong enough to start or work properly. Old cars that have points of condenser ignition system can have the same problem. You just change the condenser and it's fixed. Also dirty points can cause low spark voltage. You're just not making a full connection when they open and the lines of flux collapse and it pushes out your spark. Of all the small engines I've worked on, one of the ones that has the most common problem for no spark or low spark that has to do with this problem is Kohler engines. Yeah, like the ones that come in John Deere mowers. Kohler engines have a unique system. They have a magneto and then a little tiny transistor box on the side of the cover. Either one can go bad and cause it to have spark but low spark and your motor doesn't work properly or it doesn't start at all. Another way to test for low spark voltage is just stick a screwdriver in the end of the spark plug wire that used to go onto the spark plug and hold it say about that far from the block. If your small engine is cranking really fast or your car engine is working normal when you're cranking it the spark should jump about that far. If you have to keep bringing it closer and closer and closer to say maybe you get it like that far away and now it's finally jumping, you've got low spark voltage. Old spark plug wires can cause low spark voltage. Well two reasons. One is there's like nylon threads or filaments in there coated in a resistor type material called carbon. These are called resistor plug wires so you don't get radio noise or interference in cell phones and stuff like that and they just wear out as they get o older and the longer they are the quicker they wear out. Another reason that can cause what appears to be low spark voltage from ignition wire is this long plastic stock part that may go inside the rocker cover if you have a hemi type head. Even if your motor is not called a hemi it may have a hemi type head like that and the spark eats a little hole through the plastic here and jumps to the metal case that it slips into every time during hard acceleration. Same thing as if this wire was weak. During hard acceleration you might have a misfire but idling and slight revving it seems normal. A tip to know for you guys if you didn't already know it because I'm a repairman. If you have any still small engine products like a chainsaw, a weed eater, blower, whatever, stills are great machines and they have a lifelong warranty on their magnetos. So if you can take your magneto off or take your whole unit and take it to a steel dealer and show them it has no spark, they'll give you a new part for free. That saves you about $80. One more thing that goes bad that causes low spark voltage is CDI boxes, capacitor discharge and ignition, like on small engines, motorcycles, you know, quads, stuff like that, even snowmobiles. Those things you can't tell when they're burned out and they sometimes don't completely burn out. They cause low spark voltage even though they're not part of the magneto. They just trigger the, the magneto or the ignition coil when to fire and that can be a problem. You can start your dirt bike up and wonder why it idles forever. You can give it little revs but every time you drive it it just goes blah and dies. Well you may need a CDI box. I've changed many on Hondas and Yamahas so the very first thing to do if you have an engine that seems to have spark and gas but isn't starting or running right is change the spark plug. If that doesn't fix it, make a much smaller spark plug gap. If that doesn't fix it, check the ignition wire so there's no cuts or breaks to the insulation or that it's not shorting out or try to start it in a dark area so you can see if spark is leaking out through the plastic coating around the wire. Next is do like I explained with a screwdriver or widening the gap on a spark plug make the gap much bigger and see how much spark it can actually throw. They always should throw way more than a quarter inch, usually three quarters to an inch wide spark, like between like almost two centimeters or thereabouts. And of course if you're not sure what part to change first, if the ignition wire is changeable, some aren't because they're attached right to the magneto or to the coil, uh, if it's changeable, well then change that first because that's the cheapest and simplest. You always go cheapest first. Well, next thing is the condenser if it has one. That's cheap and often simple if it's not under a hard to get flywheel. Then uh, we're getting into the bigger boys. The next is the ignition coil. The next is the CDI. Next is the magneto and that can be underneath the flywheel like in an off-road vehicle. So that's hard to get at because you need a special puller. But eventually you'll narrow it down. Good luck.